Detroit Den 313. We're back, Steve, and Will talking that Detroit Lions football. Before we get going, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new content. Steve, who are we talking? We're 13 days away from the NFL draft. Today is Friday. Mm. We're 13 days out. It's getting mm. to be that time. All night, I sit and I think, what could the Detroit Lions do? What, what what would happen in this scenario? What if we trade up? What if we stay put? What if we trade back? What if, what if, what if, what if? I don't know. So I guess we're just going to come on here. We're going to throw out some scenarios. It'll be up to the people to, to leave some comments and let us know how they feel. So let's, let's start with, I threw out my scenario the other day um, where I wanted to trade up to. It's not where I wanted to trade up to. I just chose the first team that I thought was realistic um, as a trade partner, and that was either the Tennessee Titans or the Falcons, so I went with the Falcons. But let's just say that the Detroit Lions trade up to pick 15, William. Yep. What, what would be, we be looking at in that scenario? Leatu Latu. Maybe Jared versus at 15. Also on my list. Um, I don't want to tip my hand because we're doing our mock draft very, very soon, but Leatu Latu I think is the absolute perfect fit for the Detroit Lions. Him. Hutchinson, Reader, McNeil. I don't know. That defensive line would be quite scary. Only one person I can think of that fits better. Who's that? Jake Bates. I'd rather have Norman Bates. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we, we did a live show yesterday, and we were kind of on different ends. You're all about this whole line. I am. You're all about this whole line. I'm all about this defensive line. So for me, if the Lions pick up trade up to 15 in the top 15 anywhere, I got to get Latu. I got to get Turner. I got to get Jared Verse, whatever one's available. I just look at this team and I think we're complete. Now, at every position, position group, we could look at, we could say corners, wide receivers, um, offensive line. Our starters are set. We don't want to lose any starters. We don't have depth, but I mean, find me an NFL roster with all 53 people who are just absolutely loaded. Like it happens. You're going to have your strengths. You're going to have your weaknesses. Um, So without looking at injuries, I just look at that opposite uh, defensive inside of Aiden Hutchinson. Like I like Marcus Davenport. I just don't feel like he's playing more than 10 games this coming season. And it's not a knock on him. It's just, uh, that's kind of the, what the, what the trend that I've seen with his, his availability has been the last couple of years. It's the only question mark I have on the team. I'm going to go out and fix it. I get it. I just don't think that, uh, him or whoever you select will do what I ultimately want to do the most is protect Jared Goff. We got four pro bowlers on our offensive line. We do maybe five. Potentially. I'm not sure why you're worried about the offensive line. Because they have to p- play for hopefully up until February. That's a lot of football. It is. But, I mean, if one of them goes down, it's no different than, all right, well, what if Amon St. Brown goes down? We all Do we need to draft a wide receiver in 29 to play the just-in-case game? No, because you still have J-Mo. Who's done what? Step into his best season in 2024 and set the league on fire. I can see the future. You can, because I see Jameson Williams, a guy who's only touched the ball two times. So, I mean, I, I'm not drafting for what if I'm drafting for what's a, what's a team need for me. That's defensive end. Now I don't want to live and say, what if Frank Ragno goes down? What if Graham Glasgow or Zeitler or Decker or Sue? What if one of them goes down? I have to assume that all my guys are going to be healthy. I can't draft with the, with the just in case mindset. I feel like that's the total opposite of what Brad said. Brad said that he drafts this team and he goes into free agency, always understanding that this team needs to be ready to play football in February. That's the key to that is having depth. Yeah. I mean, find me a roster that has 53 guys that have, you know, you could just plug in pro bowler after pro bowler after pro bowler. You can't the the Detroit lions after this draft. All right. I'm just not sure where else you want me to go. To the offensive line in the draft. All right. I guess we'll just talk about what's going to happen at pick 29 then. Graham Barton. Okay. Graham Barton. What are you going to do if you trade back? If we trade back? Yeah. I'm going to take any combination of Zach Frazier, Mason McCormick. Uh, I mean, the guys are there. Christian Mahogany. Okay. Or... 
if you trade back and you get an extra second or an extra early third, then maybe you entertain taking something else with that first selection of the draft. But I'm still, it, there's going to be either my first or second selection is going to be an offensive lineman to keep my top 12, top 10, some would say top six to seven quarterback clean because he doesn't like being on the ground. Well, he's not going to be on the ground because, I mean, he's got um, he's got JMO. So, I mean, apparently he's going to break all kinds of records this year. He's got to chuck it up to him. I didn't say records. I didn't say records. I just think he's going to take a step forward. He's going to hit him in stride every single time, right? Like he's he's got a clean he's got a clean pocket. I've seen him with a clean pocket. He doesn't always deliver the best deep ball. Can you and the rest of the Detroit media stop being so negative? I'm just, hey, I'm I'm the biggest golf fan <laughs> here. Just, I'm, I'm the one who said give them the 46 million right now today. Yeah, I'm just well, I think only one of us can raise our hand when it comes to that statement. We can both raise our hand to that. I just look at the defense and I see what has Brad Holmes really done to benefit Aaron Glenn. That's something we've kind of talked about. Like he's got a maiden Hutchinson. Yeah. Jack Campbell didn't have a, a breakout rookie year. I still have plenty of faith in him. I'm not giving up by any means. But I look at when we've talked about this, what does Aaron Glenn need? He needs his personnel. Is his yeah. personnel getting an offensive lineman in round one? It's not. It's getting a defensive player. I don't care if it's a corner because we also have don't have a lot of depth at cornerback position. If, if Carlton Davis goes down, we, we've said yesterday on our live show, we don't trust Amik Robinson to be number one. So I trust Amik to be number one for 17 games. I do. I think he's going to go out for 17 games and compete. And then you're going to have Emmanuel Mosley step in. Emmanuel Mosley hasn't played football in two years. I, 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 I'm not trying to be mean. I just don't see the, the the hype of Emmanuel Mosley because he hasn't played football in two years. He's two years removed from the NFL, essentially. Um, he's got shaky knees. He's torn both ACLs. I do you have? Are you are you sold that you could just plug him in there day one and he's going to be a be ready to go full speed? If he's healthy, he's a good football player. Predicated on what I seen from him when he was in San Francisco. You said a word in there. If he's healthy. Yeah, if he's healthy. Well, he hasn't been healthy in two years. This is true. So third year's a charm. You know the old saying, Steve. You know what it is? I, I can't really imagine where this is going to go. Offense wins championships. Does it? Does it win championships? <laughs> in a football league to where the defense isn't even allowed to really cough or sniff on you. So, no, uh, I just think that we're we're living in a league now to where the NFL is moving in a direction that they really want these offenses to score points. They really want the defenses to be handcuffed and that you can only do so much defensively. And I'm not saying that the defense isn't important because it is vital. And as a person who coaches defense, I, I love defense, but when in this NFL and for our team, I think that we can find solid defensive police pieces to fit the roles that we need in the second, third, trading up until the fourth, maybe even fifth round. We've did all of these draft previews. We went over all of these prospects. We've went over kids that might not even get drafted. They might ultimately be free agent signees. And there's a lot of defenders on those lists. Some because of that's where we were going because we really wanted to bolster this defense. Other reasons is because I believe that this is – draft is a little bit deeper than we might think defensively bottom line is we have to be able to protect jared goff if this team is going to be successful now if we were the chiefs or the bills or the ravens shoot even the san francisco 49ers maybe i wouldn't be so worried about making sure that we have a top five offensive line in the nfl but that's not where we live that's not what we need for our guy to be successful. He's not going to be throwing a whole bunch of off-platform, improvisational plays where he's running and scrambling, and running out of the pocket and making throws downfield. He's going to be in that pocket, throwing a very accurate, very precise football on time. Tom and Ross St. Brown, J. Mo, Sam Laporta, hopefully a little bit more Jameer Gibbs. Um probably um, a little bit of Donovan Peoples Jones if we don't draft a receiver and I'm going to really TK eight, five. That's right. And I, I'm going to really enjoy watching that. 
he's going to be doing it from a clean pocket because Brad is going to do what old Will is telling him to do. He's going to bolster this offensive line, whether he trades back or just does that pick 29. I'm a big fan of trading back, getting an extra piece, and really getting nasty with it. But, yeah, it remains to be seen. And But at the end of the day, people have said it in our comments. People have texted it to me. Uh, people have texted it to you. We never know what may happen. Brad might train up to the first pick and grab Caleb Williams. Who knows? <laughs> like, you know, I highly wow. doubt it. I'm, we're being funny. We're being sarcastic. But there is there is some scenario or some guy that we haven't thought about or talked about or uh, we're overlooking that I could see potentially Brad going and grabbing him or something that he may do or, shoot, he may – trade up into the first round and then trade up into the second. And we might only have two draft picks and Steve, you might be half right. And I might be half right. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, I, I, I've been trying to rack my brain and go over the scenario that we haven't thought about yet, but in my mind, the best that my passenger seat GM can come up with is drafting an offensive lineman very early, whether it's at pick 29 or try trading up because I think that those offensive linemen slip tremendously as far as athleticism or just physical people moving ability or the combination of the two as you wait and wait and wait till the third round like our second round pick is in the third round dang there William I'm glad you brought something up a few minutes ago about offenses winning championships Mm -hmm. who's the best quarterback in the NFL right now Jared Goff all right all right all right okay who's the second best quarterback in the NFL right now a a close number two will probably would be Patty Mahomes. Okay, you know Patrick Mahomes lost the Super Bowl, right? When he was running for his life, bingo. Yeah, running bingo. for his life. One of the best quarterbacks that we've seen in the last twenty years, athletically more gifted than Tom Brady, but Tom Brady is still the goat. What they did to him was, I think I was looking at a stat earlier. He had to run for. I think I could be wrong on the stat. Someone will probably hammer me. I think he ran for a total of 180 yards from sideline to sideline, running for his life. Mm-hmm. The defensive line was the most disruptive part of that Super Bowl, keeping Patrick Mahomes contained, flushing him, making him run. They had a good enough secondary to um, to stick to the receivers and not give him anyone to throw to. That was just a few years ago. Was that 20? Was that the COVID year 2020, f- four years ago? Something like that. So, some of the NFL rules have changed, you know, the drop tackling, you know, uh, defensive backs and pass interference and when you can hand fight and when you can't questionable rules, something that's not changed really that doesn't affect many people is you could still rush the quarterback. You could still hit them. Just don't fall directly on top of them um, or hit them below the knee or hit them below the knee um, or sneeze on them. So the pass rushers and their rules are still pretty locked in. Now they can be affected a little bit by the drop tackle, but they're not really going to be in coverage often. Not Mm -hmm. saying Aiden Hutchinson never has. He's got a couple interceptions while he's been in coverage. But to have a dominant pass rush, it doesn't matter. It's been shown. There's history of it with Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. You get a dominant pass rush, Mm -hmm. it affects the game. It affects big games. It affects Super Bowls. I just can't. I can't. I can't get off of it. I'm I'm standing on my island. I'm coming here to defend Aaron Glenn because we've done that here plenty of times. So I I can't come here and say I'm going to defend Aaron Glenn and then go draft a wide receiver in first round and not give him the personnel he needs that we both agree on, whether that's a corner, uh, a safety, another linebacker, a defensive end. We've given this offense everything it needs. It's top five in the league easily. Top, top two offensive line, probably number one now. Where's our defense rank? It's in the 20s. It's got to be fixed. So for everyone saying, oh, it's got to be wide receiver or other positions on on the offense, our offense was top five. Like, okay, we lost Reynolds. We lost Jonah Jackson, replaced him with Zeitler, replacing Josh Reynolds with probably Donovan Peoples-Jones or maybe a draft pick somewhere along the way. Got to fix the defense. It was ranked in the 20s. It was giving up 30 points a game at one point last season and got it down to 23, I believe I said at one point when I did the math. Still not great. Got shredded yardage-wise um, the last five games of the year, and I understand we were going against Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Mike Evans, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, like some of the best receivers in the league. You know – when you put a pass rush together, the quarterbacks can't throw the ball as often. Or if um, you don't whiff on a sack in the end zone, maybe those touchdowns don't happen and you win those, those those games in Dallas, just throwing it out there. We got to help Aaron Glenn out a little bit. 
Steve, I think you just proved my point, and I thank you for that. I really appreciate <laughs> it. I'm talking defense. Because at the end of the day, you said that one of the times where Patrick Mahomes really struggled was when he was running for his life. And I remember that season. And I remember his top offensive linemen not are getting injured, not being available. And that was one of the main reasons that he was running for his life. Another one was the defenders that were chasing after him. But I think that if we see somebody that we could agree, Jared Goff, Vanilla Vic, as you say, may be slightly less athletic than Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> that's, being, that's being pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> and the thought of him back there running for his life would put us in a very, very bad situation, irregardless of what we have defensively. So I think that it's very important, very important that we bolster this offensive line. Now, I'm not going to get too far into it because I don't want to give up and I've already given too much, but of what my mock draft scenarios and thought processes and, you know, what guys I want, where you guys know who a lot of my me guys are, a lot of the guys that I love, but this offensive line has to be good for us to be successful. And I don't believe that Brad Holmes wants to be successful next season. I think he wants to be successful next season, the season after that, the season after that, the season after that, the season after that, and the season after that. I think that's what he's preparing for. We Jared Goff has mentioned being here for an extended period of time. I don't think that he's envisioning having a good season next year and running for his life the rest of the time here. Only way you do that is solidify this offensive line. Taylor Decker, I quote, exact age, 57 years old. All right. Zittler, exact age, 87 years old. Wow. All right. Pretty good right. shape for 87. Frank Ragnall <laughs> may not be as old as those guys, but his so body. 70, 73, something like that. His body is 617 years old, or at least his feet are. All right. Graham Glasgow, he is also 70 years old. He just looks really good for an old guy, right? And and Sewell is the only one that, that's a young, young, hungry lion out of that group. Everybody is really good out of the group. Everybody is really good. But there's going to come a time, and that time is going to be sooner rather than later, that that group is not going to be the same. I suspect that it's going to be different by at least one piece next year, maybe two. We need guys that can step in and keep this thing rolling at that offensive line position. And we need to start that in this draft, either at pick 29 or at pick 61. It needs to be an offensive lineman. It needs to be a versatile offensive lineman that can do multiple things, whether it's a Graham Barton that can play tackle guard and center, whether it's a Jackson Powers Johnson that can play center and guard. So when we replace Zittler next year, if we need to, we do it with whoever's available. Maybe there's just a center available. Kick them over the guard, bring in that center, right? So be it because Frank's out of there for some reason. He wants to retire. Like there is options if we just do this thing the right way. Now, then we go and get our defender with that second pick, right? Maybe you go get one of the next linebackers available. Who went first? Was it Edrin Cooper? Or was it Peyton Wilson? Right? Maybe it's a junior Colson. You start to solidify those things of chasing down these quarterbacks. Then maybe I go get one of these secondary edge rushers like a Chris Braswell. Then maybe I go get my Max Milton or my Mikey Samer still right, to, to get in this uh this uh cornerback situation and add some depth. That's when I start going and adding pieces. Or right, that's when I trade up. But it's either I'm trading up into the top half of the second round, right? Or I'm trading back from pick 29 into the top half of the second round and hopefully adding a third round or an additional second round pick and going from there. That's just my thoughts. If we were going to do something, I'd be trading a second round pick, you know, to jump back into the top half of the second round this year or second round pick in 2025 to jump back into the second, second round this year. Right. That's just where I'm at. I want offensive linemen. 
I want an edge rusher. I want a uh, quarterback to back up Jared Goff and Hendon Hooker. That's 19 years old. And uh, maybe in uh, Bryce Underwood. Uh, no, I'm just joking. But I was going to say, I, uh, how are you 19 in the NFL I, when you got to be at least teasing. 21? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm not sure I'm about teasing. your math there. I'm teasing and saying I just want everything, man. I want everything. And I know I'm not going to get everything, but I think trading back in this draft, getting one more piece could potentially – not just solidify us for next season, not just go for broke. I want to go for the next decade and enjoy these Detroit Lions being good because if we made one run and that was it, I would be very disappointed. William, we got to go back in time a little bit because we're going to talk a little bit more about that Chiefs. We're going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit more. You Mm -hmm. said they lost an offensive lineman? Yeah. I believe it was their right guard. I believe it was Andrew Riley. I could be they wrong lost, about that. They lost more than one offensive oh. lineman that season. You know what else I'm looking at on the on the Kansas City Chiefs team? Talk to me. A rookie running back, Clyde Edwards Alaire. Didn't mm-hmm. wasn't really anything special. Former first round pick. I would yeah, say that the Lions. That, that was probably his best year. Uh, so far, he had 800, 800 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, Jameer Gibbs had that by week nine. Just saying. Uh, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes, mm-hmm. best quarterback in the NFL. You know, not not Jared Goff. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it since uh, I know you won't. Mm. Travis Kelsey in 2020, probably the best tight end in the league, hands mm. down, not even close. Also on that team was a guy by the name of, I don't know, he might sound a little familiar for you, uh, Tyreek Hill. Mm-hmm. You know what the Baltimore or the, the 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 Buccaneers did? Went out there and shut down that whole offense. A right guard crippled their team so bad that the best player at three positions, tight end, wide receiver, quarterback, still got shut down. Mm. Defense wins. Mm championships defense keeps you in games defense puts you in third and 14 instead of third and three that's a huge difference the days of the baltimore ravens running out ray lewis and ed reed and just terrell suggs and a troop of just terrell suggs did he have a gun in his pocket while he was playing violent back in 2001 violent violent man (laughs) out there just shutting the offenses down and just doing whatever they want just ray lewis killed a man you're talking criminals yeah, they were out there just just putting in work. Those days are over, buddy. Those yeah, days I mean, over. we're talking, yeah, like the early 2000s type of defenses are, but I'm just talking four years ago. Buddy, this is, uh, we need to, and I'm not saying that defense isn't important. I'm just being silly talking about, you know, and I know you know that, but just. I know, before sometimes, people get sometimes in, William, I don't know. Yeah, I, before, sometimes I don't know. <laughs> before people get in the comments, you know, but we have to protect Jared Goff. It's priority number one for the Detroit Lions. I I, I kind of feel I don't know for sure, so I'm not going to speak to it. But I'm kind of getting the feeling that you disagree. But for me, that is priority number one to protect Jared Goff with my soul, making I, sure that Jared Goff is okay or any quarterback that is back there, unless they show me that it no longer matters as much as it matters now. Now, if we get a different situation back there, where Maybe a guy breaking free and coming free isn't that big of a deal. Right? Then m- maybe I'll look at different priorities. While I have a person that you have referred to as a statue back there. Kind of like Tom Brady in 2020? No. Like <laughs> at- not, athletically wise? Not like Tom Brady. Not like Peyton Manning. Not like Drew Brees. And here's why. Those guys had a way of controlling the play before the play started. Meaning they're identifying the blitzer. They know where the blitzer is coming from. They know what their protection is going to do. They would step just enough left or just enough right or just enough up in a pocket or just enough back. And a lot of times, especially Peyton Manning, but Tom Brady too, did it so beautifully. They'd step up just enough so that guy just runs straight on by. Maybe he touches a jersey, but not enough to change the outcome of the place. And they would have hots. Hots being a guy that's going right behind that person's ear, right? So where where the where that defender was coming from, he was just replacing that person with the football and the player that he just sent to that location. All three of those guys. So I think that while they may not have had an athleticism that was similar to uh, Lamar Jackson or 
you know, Justin Fields, these guys that are just crazy dynamic, you know, Jalen Hurts, the list goes on. They knew how to control the pocket with this right here, right, with this right here. And that is something that Jared Goff has yet to show me that he can identify where the blitz is coming from and manipulate that blitz with his feet. Not and and I think again, people think that I mean taking off like Lamar Jackson. No, I just mean having control of it in a sense of you can evade that blitz, that scheme, that stunt going on up front by a true understanding of what that defense is trying to do to you pre-snap. Before he calls hike, they those guys knew what was happening and they were just playing a step ahead of everybody else on the field. And you think Jared Goff is so athletically gifted that he doesn't have those same type of brains to step up and, and maneuver a pocket? I think that Sean McVay has told me um, what some of Jared Goff's limitations are. I think that when you watch the film, you could see some of those things that he was talking about. And I think that there are things that Jared Goff does really well um, to negate the things that he doesn't do well. I also think that those are things that he's been working on, but I don't think that he's of that caliber. That group that I just mentioned, especially the top two, they were very special at it. They were potentially some of the best to ever do it at understanding what a defense was trying to do to him pre-snap. And I'm not knocking Jared Goff for not being in that conversation. That's a special conversation, but it's what allowed unathletic guys to be athletic. That's what I'm saying. Tom Brady wasn't overly athletic, though. That's all I was saying is Tom Brady won that Super Bowl in 2020. That's the one I keep referring to. He didn't do much with his legs besides moving up and down a step or two. Um, I just I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. I'll say it right now today, uh, April 12th. The one thing that will piss me off in the first round is if Brad Holmes drafts the offensive line, because I truly do not believe you draft anybody in the first round other than a quarterback and sit them on the shelf for at least a year pending an injury. I just can't take it. I can't take a guard in the, or a center or a tackle in the first round and say, hey, um, you're a first round pick. I think you need to come in and figure out the game. You're a first round pick for a reason. You should be getting on the field. Now, as a quarterback, it's a little different. There's a thousand things you have to know. So I can understand when teams do that. When when Patrick Mahomes got drafted and he sat for a year in the first round, I need someone who is going to be on the field more often than not and not because someone got hurt. I'm going to put you on the field because I need you on the field, not because Penny Sewell got hurt or Frank Ragnall got hurt. So I'll say it. Offensive line, first round, will piss me off. I'll like the player, and I'll be real excited, but I won't be excited until August or September of 2025 because I want this offensive line to play all 17 games. I know it's a stretch, but I'm just not willing to, to, to use a first-round pick on a just-in-case scenario. I can fix that in round two, round three, round four if we somehow get one, round five, first pick defense that's all i'm saying well that, that's it and 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 end of end of rant i get it so if we draft a corner you'll be good if we draft a linebacker you'll be good if we draft an edge rusher you'll be good defensive tackle you'll be good um i haven't heard you mention safety if we draft cooper DeJean and he ends up playing safety would you be good i'll be good because those are guys i can cycle onto the field Whereas offensive line, you're not saying, hey, Penny, come out and get a break. Or, hey, Frank, come out and get a break. Like, it, it can happen if you get hurt. But all those other positions, even receiver, like, I can get you into the game to give a guy a, a, a blow, you know, get some air. Offensive line stays on the field, and I get it. We can bring in the the um, the swing tackle, but I think Dan Skipper's played that very well. Um, Cody, Coyote Awasikwa came in a little bit and played, played well. He's not a pro bowler. I just can't draft an offensive lineman at 29 and say, hey, We'll see you in 2025. You're a first round pick. You're damn near ready to be in the NFL. That's what a first round pick tells me. Not you're ready, but we kind of want to sit you. That's what you do with quarterbacks, not guards, tackles, centers. Just doesn't happen in my opinion. The only time I want to see is with the quarterback. Cooper DeJean, good. Uh, yeah, you could cycle him in. You could put him in on punt return, kick return. Um, he's played a little receiver at, at Iowa. I don't want to see him doing that in the NFL, but um, it, you know, you can you can get him into the game without someone going down. Same thing with a lot of the other guys or yeah. positions. Fair enough, man. I, so I, guys, I, uh, well, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I, I respect the take. Guys, just a little draft preview. We're fully locked in. Draft mode, 13 days away. Roughly five, 13 days and five-ish hours. It's about 3 p.m. We're getting there. 
Um, we're going to be at the draft. It's going to be a lot of people there. Get your Airbnb. Um, learn how to merge into traffic. Also, if you're coming from out of town, I don't want to see any of that Ohio bullshit that a lot of you guys do when you come up here and wait till the last second to merge. But draft preview show, leave some comments. Let us know how you feel, who you're looking at in the first round, or even just a position group. Hit that like button. If you're new here, stick around, subscribe. We'll be back later with some more content. Peace. <laughs>